Do you suffer frequent headaches and do you also have neck pain? If you answer yes to these questions, then you may be suffering what's called cervicogenic headaches, a headache disorder that starts from the upper neck. Today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about the signs and symptoms of cervicogenic headache. So maybe you can identify if you're possibly suffering from cervicogenic headache. And we're going to give you a couple really easy tests that you can do at home to maybe get some information on if you need to seek someone out for a care for this particular disorder. Let's get in the video and let's take a look at some of the tests. Well, welcome back to another episode of Physio Tips with Mauro. I'm your host, Mauro Burnett. And for those of you that don't know me, I'm a board certified orthopedic specialist in physical therapy and the owner of Australian Physiotherapy Specialist located here in Jacksonville, Florida. For today's video, we're going to kick off a series on cervicogenic headache disorders. For today's video, we're going to look at signs and symptoms of cervicogenic headache. We'll define what cervicogenic headache is. And then we're going to look at some easy tests that you could do at home to possibly identify if you may be having cervicogenic headaches. So let's get into this and we're going to start with defining cervicogenic headaches. Let's define cervicogenic headache. I've got my spine model here. In the spine model, we've got the seven vertebra and the eight nerves of the neck. Here is the C1 vertebra. C2, and then C3. And this is kind of the back of the head that we're showing here. You can see the yellow nerves coming out of the upper neck. C1, 2, and 3, these upper nerves, they're very interesting. When your upper neck becomes tight or sore or irritated, or maybe one of your joints are a little bit pinched, it can begin to irritate these upper neck nerves, which then can connect to other nerves that go off to your head and face. And this can cause a nasty headache and could turn into a migraine. That's what we would call a cervicogenic headache. Well, now that we've defined cervicogenic headache, let's talk a little bit more about the nerves that can wreak havoc on the head. One such nerve is called the occipital nerve. The occipital nerve attaches into the upper neck joints and muscles and can cause a terrible pain on the back of the skull even maybe towards the top of the skull. Another such nerve is called the trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve has three branches, like a tricycle with three wheels. The trigeminal has a branch above your eye, in your sinus cavity, and in your jaw. So if you're having irritation of your upper neck on the left, it is possible it could irritate the nerves of the trigeminal nerve. And now you could have a pain that could be above the head, or above the eye in this forehead area. You can feel like maybe I'm having a sinus infection because it could really be irritated in the sinus area. It could tighten your jaw muscles and start to look like a TMJ problem. So TMJ problem and upper neck problems oftentimes go hand in hand. That's another symptom that could make you wonder if you're having this type of disorder. If you have headaches and you also have jaw tightness. Another symptom that I'll mention as well is dizziness. We've done lots of videos on cervical dizziness on this channel, but uh, in this case, the focus is going to be a little bit more towards the headache, but it's really the same disorder. The upper neck could be headaches, it could be dizziness, it could be nausea, it could be TMJ tightness. So those are going to be some of our classic symptoms. Now, as far as different headache classifications, there's lots of headache classifications. A cervical headache could present like many other type headaches, so it's very difficult to vet out. It could be a one-sided headache. It could also cause both sides of your head to hurt. It can be worse on the right side most of the time, and then one day it's worse on the left side. You could have light sensitivity. You could have sound sensitivity. So it's a bit tricky to vet out. So we need a couple physical tests that we can do to try to look at, I definitely have headaches, but do I have those cervical components? So let's get into our first test, cervical range of motion. Our first test that we're going to look at that's easy to do at home is we're going to do a self-assessment of your cervical range of motion. <clears throat> it kind of goes like this. Turn to the left as far as you possibly can, and we're just looking for obvious pain or tightness. 
We can compare that to turning to the right as far as you can. We then can look at lower neck flexion and extension. Lower neck flexion looks like this. I flex my head down. Look to see if there's any pain or discomfort. Does it irritate my neck? Does it cause increased head pain? And then we look at lower cervical or lower neck extension. Finally, we can look at side to side range of motion. Does that cause pain or discomfort? Now, let's look at two more tests that you can do very specific for the upper neck because cervicogenic headaches are usually a product of your upper neck. The first one is doing upper neck flexion. The way this works is you bring your chin straight back like you're making a double chin. And we're looking to see, does that cause pain or tightness one side versus the other, right? So we'll do a side view of that. Bring it straight back. Kind of like it's going straight back on a shelf. And we're looking to see if that's positive or not. Does it increase your headache? Does it make it better or worse? In some instances, this could actually be a treatment if you find that it makes your neck feel tight and sore. You try it a few times and it could possibly loosen you up. The next test we're going to look at, now that we've looked at upper cervical flexion, is upper cervical extension. It kind of looks like this. It's a little funny. I'm going to drive my chin up and out at a 45 degrees. And if you'll notice when I do that, it's going to cause a lot of extension right at the upper neck. So then we can test cervical extension, upper cervical extension, and upper cervical flexion to see if any of those are obviously positive or not. So that's going to be our first test. However, here's the tricky part. Sometimes you can have cervicogenic headaches and still have pretty good range of motion. In some instances, it's a strength and motor control loss. So that's what we're going to look at next. We're going to look at an easy test you can do at home to see if you've lost some obvious strength in the neck. Let's look at that test next. All right, for this test, we're going to do what's called the cervical liftoff test. It's an assessment of our muscle strength deep in the front of our neck. What we're going to do, I'm going to lay my head back, I'm going to tuck my chin in, I'm going to lift my head slightly, and I should be able to hold it for 20 or 30 seconds without too much shaking, pain, or discomfort. If we find that, boy, it gets really shaky and really sore within the first few seconds, that's definitely a positive test. On average, someone that hasn't had a lot of neck pain, we should be able to get one or two reps with about 20 to 30 seconds. So it kind of looks like this. If everything goes well, I should be able to hold this for a few seconds. So that gives us a good idea on how we can do that cervical liftoff test at home. Lying down on a pillow, tuck your chin in so it makes a crease at your jawline, lift your head off the pillow, maybe just a couple inches, and we're looking to see if you can hold for 20 to 30 seconds. Is it easy and very light effort, or does it take high effort? It causes pain or discomfort right off the bat. Obviously, abort the test, put it back down. It was definitely positive. So that's going to be two tests that we can look at. And now we're going to get into the third test. We're going to look at cervical palpation. Our third test that we're going to look at is a palpation test. Palpation, we can do you know, it's a test of pushing into something to see if it's painful. It's a pretty simple test. We push and we look to see if someone says, ouch, right? Our doctors have done this for centuries. So the upper neck, if I put my thumb right underneath the skull, just a little bit offset to the right, and I press in, I'm looking to see if that's pain, painful or tight in the upper neck. Here's another viewpoint. Here's the right side. And then here's the left side. If you have obvious pain or tightness one side versus the other, especially if the side that's painful correlates to the side that you have headaches on more frequently, then that would be a positive palpation test for cervicogenic headache. Well, thanks for watching today's video on easy tests at home to see if you possibly are suffering cervicogenic headaches. Stay tuned because in a week or so, we're going to put out another video on the same series where we're going to start going into interventions, exercises that you can do at home to start getting some relief from cervicogenic headaches.
Thanks for watching. Remember, you can subscribe to our channel to receive more videos like this in the future. It's goodbye for now, and we'll see you next time on Physio Tips with Mara.